welcome to the fourth of our messages this week in our camp meetings. I don't know about many of you, but I've been away for many, many summers just to Bible conferences, camp weeks, and encountered God in a very special way. And again tonight, I believe God has got something very specific to say to us. Uh, all of the messages so far have been stirring, and I believe God again tonight is going to touch our hearts as we open the Bible. Just one verse from me this evening, which is from 2 Timothy 1 and verse 14. And I'm reading the message verses just to uh, start us off uh, this evening. So keep at your work, this faith and love rooted in Christ, exactly as I set it out for you. It's as sound as the day when you first heard it from me. Guard this precious thing placed in your custody by the Holy Spirit who works in us. Paul is telling his spiritual son, uh, Timothy, not to lose what God has deposited in him. That's a very important principle. God, by his Holy Spirit, has saved us. The Bible says that's the deposit of our inheritance which is to come. He not only put himself in us by his Holy Spirit, but he's deposited gifts in us, callings, openings, things to do for him that perhaps we wouldn't have uh, thought of in a million years, but God has come down and he has deposited them in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And Paul is telling the young Timothy, don't let go of that which God has put in you. Don't let it go, not for a moment. It's quite interesting as you uh, we read what Paul has to say to Timothy. Um, Paul is not a, what I would call a preach em up uh, guy. He's more of a Bible teacher. He writes two thirds of the New Testament. He writes those incredible books of theology, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians. He tells us that he speaks in tongues more than anybody else. So as he's reaching the end of his life and his ministry and he's wanting to convey to his young protege something of the heart of God, you'd think he'd have something very special to say, wouldn't you? Something very deep and something very theological. You'd think the final words that he'd have to say to him would be his best revelation. They kept the new wine, uh, what's that story in the canon gallery? You kept the new wine, the old wine, till last. You kept the best till now. You'd have thought with Paul that that's exactly how it would be with Timothy. And yet he says to him, God the precious thing in you by the custody of the Holy Spirit. What God has put in you, God, it. that's his word. He's not, he's not, not a stupendous supernatural type thing, but it is a warning. Timothy, what God's put in you, don't let it go. Lay hold of it. Keep it ablaze, keep it on fire, for, but not for a minute. Do not, do not, do not let it go. And he's even finding hard to find a word to describe it. He says, that thing, I don't know about you, but as a believer in Jesus, it's hard sometimes to describe how we feel or what we feel. And I don't think he's calling the Holy Spirit a thing, but what he's saying is what's been deposited in you by the Holy Spirit. That feeling, that connection, that joy, that peace, that understanding that thing has come from God it didn't come naturally by your parents it didn't come because you went to church it was an impartation of the Holy Spirit and I believe for many of you you need to understand that this evening that God has deposited something in you and like Paul to the young Timothy I say keep hold of what God has placed on the inside of you it's really important Timothy was the pastor of the church of Ephesus after Paul's death Historians would have us believe that there were over 20,000 people that attended that church. We talk about mega churches today, but there were mega churches of the past. And Ephesus was one of those great churches. We'll read in a moment what God has spread to them through John in the book of Revelation. But God speaks clearly to this mega church at Ephesus. It's also reported that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was one of the members. So what a church that would have been. Jesus' mom was one of the members. 20,000 people on fire for God and young Timothy who's been mentored by Paul is the pastor sounds like a great church to me but here's the warning and I just want to say this in all sincerity to all of us this evening that church in Ephesus no longer exists there is not one stone left upon a stone and I've often said to our church the books the book of Revelation when God speaks to his churches all of those that he names as being churches of the day, big churches, 
influential churches, powerful churches are no more. And all they are but is cruise stops on cruises around the Med, most of them. Many of you have been on a cruise or have stopped off at some of these places. There's not big churches there full of the Holy Ghost anymore. There's just rubble where they used to be. That's why it's important we keep hold of the thing, stir up the thing that is within us because it's so easy to lose what God has placed on the inside of us. In the writing to the book, uh, in book of Revelation, again, uh, delivering it in the message version of the scriptures, John writes this, writes to Ephesus, to the angel of the church, the one with the seven stars in his right grip, striding with the golden seven lights in the circle speak. See, I see what you've done, your hard work, your refusal to quit. I know that you can't stomach evil and you weed out the apostolic pretenders. I know you're persistent, your courage in my cause and it will never wear out. But you walk away from your first love. Why? What's going on with you anyway? Do you have any idea how far you've fallen? It's like a Lucifer fall. Turn back. Recover my dearly loved ones, no time to waste. I'm well on my way to removing the light from your golden circle. Wow, that's a powerful message, isn't it, to the church there? And to the individuals in the church, because let's remember, churches are not just an organisation. Churches are a body made up of individual members. And Paul says, and we're all part of that body. We all have our function to play, our part to play in what God is doing for us. And so he says very clearly to them, there's some great things about your life and your church. He says, you work hard and you don't quit. I want to commend many of you, especially in our church, who have worked so hard and stuck it out year after year after year, doing things in our programmes that other people wouldn't have done, but carried on regardless, head down, soldiering on. Thank you for your commitment. You stood against wrong teaching. There were educated people as far as the word is concerned, not educated as far as university was concerned but certainly they knew God's word they knew how to teach and to preach and to evaluate teaching and preaching they were a great bunch of people so all of that was good as far as God was concerned he said they were even courageous with the gospel God make us courageous people with the gospel we've been less than courageous haven't we so all of these great things are going for this church here in Ephesus but he says this you have walked away from your first love or in other words you've let go of what God has put in you that first love that first fluttering feeling that kind of passion for God that we've all experienced in the past I don't know about you but there's been times that I've been just so overall with the love of Jesus I've been so in love with him and all of the good things that they could have done and said the Lord says well that's okay but you don't love me like you used to love me and this is a very simple message tonight, but I just want to say to you, do you love Jesus as much as you used to love him? We can work hard, we can stand for truth, we can be courageous for the gospel, but is our hearts burning with a passion that we once knew for Christ? Can I just walk you back? Because it's so easy to get uh, spiritually dry and lose our first love. Can I just walk you back to some of those fundamental moments in your walk with Christ? Can I remind you of the moment when you became a Christian for the first time? Not out of head knowledge, but out of a revelation of the heart. You may not have even understood what the preacher was saying, but something stirred in, your, in a man or in a woman. Suddenly you knew something was happening. You knew a, a, a joy. You knew a conviction of the Holy Spirit. Something occurred in you and instantly you knew you were connected with God. That's that thing we're talking about now. That's that kind of soul connection with God Almighty that you can't buy, that you can't make up. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Do you feel that same way as you did then in that moment when nothing else in the world mattered but your salvation, nothing else in the world mattered but getting to the feet of the cross and to throw in your all and asking Jesus to come into your heart and into your life? How about that time when you were baptised in water? Oh, you couldn't wait to get to church and it wouldn't have mattered if you'd forgotten your change of clothing, you'd have gone in the baptismal tank with all your clothes on, it wouldn't have made any difference. 
and, and you were, and when you came out of that water you just felt that afterglow of just doing something that's blessed the heart of God because it was something he commanded you to do to be baptized and now you're just over the moon because you feel his presence and his joy in your heart or maybe it was a time you encountered God in the Holy Spirit wherever that was maybe for the first time you spoke out in tongues and you just were lost in a praise to God and you just were away you just didn't know where you were or who you were but you were lost in in God's anointing and blessing or maybe somebody prayed for you and you went out in the spirit and you lay on the floor for hours and just encountering God I've been in all of those places and that, that touch of God that meant so much at the moment so much so real but now I look back and say am I as sharp then uh, now as I as I was then am I as much in love with Jesus in this moment as I was in those moments well this is what he says in uh, the message version of this scripture turn back recover your dear dearly one your early love mo don't waste any time god doesn't waste time he doesn't want us to waste time either and he's calling us to a fresh dedication he wants to set our hearts ablaze again for his glory and for his honor you see God hates lukewarm Christianity. He goes on to talk to another church, Laodicea this time. He says this, I know you inside out, and I find little to my liking. You're not cold and you're not hot. Far better than you either cold or hot. You're stale, you're stagnant, and you make me want to vomit. That doesn't sound a good place to be in, does it? God wants passionate, burning hearts that are connected to the kingdom of God. And maybe you aren't as passionate as you were Maybe you're just kind of feeling that you are not anywhere in God at the moment. I, I want to tell you to stir up the gift. Hold on to that thing that God has given you. He's not finished with you yet. Guard that precious thing placed in you by the custody of the Holy Spirit. And then Timothy gets another word from his mentor, Paul. That precious memory triggers another, Paul says. Your honest faith. What is rich in faith. It would have been handed down to you from Lois, your grandmother, and Eunice, and now to you. The special gift of ministry you received when I laid hands on you and prayed. Keep that ablaze. God doesn't want us to be shy with his gifts, but bold, loving, and sensible. What he's saying is what came down your family line was something of a blessing. God had clearly called your family out for the purposes of God. First to your nan, then your mom. And now you, Timothy, and remember when we had that prophetic session when you got filled with the Holy Ghost and I began to bring a prophetic word into your life and you became a ministry gift of Jesus Christ. You became an Ephesians 4 gifting and you became a leader in that church. I want you to stir that up as well. I want you to remember those times when I put a calling upon your life and stir that up as well. To remember that to stir up the thing that is of God in you, which has been passed down your family line, which has been imparted to you by the prophetic. And the laying on of hands. Keep it ablaze. I love that. God does not want us to be shy with his gifts. But bold, loving and sensible. God wants us to use that which he has put in us. Stir it up. God has deposited in us something that we need to guard. And he wants to keep us burning and ablaze. Just like the priests had to throughout their time. Just to keep that fire on the altar ablaze. That it did not go out. They kept it ablaze day and night. And burnt, so burnt offerings can come up before the Lord God. He's wanting our love to be connected to him day and night. And for us to be on fire for him. We said this in one of my earlier sessions about becoming spiritually dry. And we use this scripture when the axe is dull, more effort is required. Um, so I believe that if that's you tonight, you, you need to take some more time out personally for God. Uh, maybe in a quiet time. Also, maybe it could be a good time right now corporately to connect with other people. Perhaps two or three others being as we're locked down just to pray. Maybe over Zoom, maybe in a garden, maybe in a prayer walk. But connect again and stir your hearts because we don't want to become spiritually dry. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know what the scripture says? We have these vessels in drawers of clay. We leak and we spill. So you can be filled with the Holy Ghost one day and the next day feel half empty and the next day completely empty. Because it spills out of us as we minister to people as we live through the trials and tribulations of our lives, that the Holy Spirit spills out of us. And therefore we need to be, keep on being filled, the scripture says, doesn't it, with the 
Holy Spirit, keep on getting topped up with the power of God, with the power of heaven. You know, I want you to know that God wants you to be stirred tonight. And um, if you've received a prophetic word over your life, I want you to um, just bear with me for a moment because I want to say a few things to you. Many people get frustrated and don't put God first place and his work first place because they've had a prophetic word that didn't seem to come to pass and therefore they get very frustrated with God and especially with leaders and with his church. Well, if the pastor had only recognised me, then I would have been doing this. If I'd have only gone to a different church, I might have been doing that. Maybe God's not given me this for this time, perhaps it's for another season. So we hear all of these questions and people getting rather frustrated with God. First thing I want you to say is if anything comes forward that's prophetic, that's extra to the Bible, we don't believe in extra biblical revelation, but we do believe that God can speak to people through people and gives us very specific words. If God's spoken to you like that and you feel like you should be doing something that you're not doing at the moment, there's a few checks there. Have you shared that with leaders? Because it's great to get wisdom and advice from leaders. And the Bible says that, that those are a spiritual judge. It may be that you've misinterpreted what God has said to you. Have you taken it and laid it against the Bible to make sure it was truth, 100% truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. And you need to because the word is the final say over our lives. Not what, not, not, not Mr. Big the Evangelist said when he put his hand on our heads. You know, I prophesy over a lot of people, but I tell you something, I could be wrong. So I always try and preface it with this. I believe God is saying to you, it's very important that you go and get it in writing. Um, ask the Lord to put it back in writing through his word. I never intended to say this, but I've said this to so many people. I'm, I've been a salesman all my life. And if somebody said, I'm going to buy X amount of product from you, I don't get excited until I've got it in writing. They might give me a verbal promise. But until I've got it in a letter or an email, or in the olden days we used to get a fax, do you remember fax machines? Until I get one of those in my hand, then I don't believe it's mine. And some of you need to go back and recheck the words that God has given you by his, his, his written word and allow his written word to correct it and to give you the feeling and the assurance that God is with you. Definitely, definitely, definitely. The other thing I want to say as well is that many people have been called by God and I have no doubt there's a great call upon many of our lives. The problem is this, we think that we're going to go from where we are to where we need to be in a moment and there's going to be no hard work in between time or it's not going to cost us. Well, anybody that's ever done anything big for God understands this, that we grow through uh, faithfulness. So, Parable of the Talents again, one of my favourite stories. The man who was faithful in a few the master gives him more faithfulness in the kingdom of god always leads to increased opportunity so let me say to you if god has called you to something then be faithful in it and allow him to exhort you in due season when you try and push your way to where you believe god wants you to be it never ever works i'm telling you if you'll be faithful if you'll be committed if you'll do what god asks you to do you will be recognised in due season without a shadow of a doubt and certainly essentially in the church that God has given me to lead. We always are looking for those that God is using that we might promote you into greater and bigger things in God. So you must do that, always do that. And also it's all around having a servant spirit. Any leadership, any gifting that God has placed in you is in order to serve others. If it's all about you at the moment, then revisit again and ask the questions. God has given us these gifts that we might minister truth, peace and joy into the lives of those that are around and about us. It's not for a magic badge on our, on our blazer pocket or to say what, what clever people we've been. God's call is without repentance and he wants us to be servants of all and love people into the kingdom of God. So he goes on to say, so keep at your work, this faith and love and the rooted in Christ, exactly as I set it out for you. It's a sound today as it was the first time you heard it. God, this precious thing placed into you by the custody of the Holy Spirit who works in you. Stir up that passion for Jesus. So let me just recap, then we'll pray. My prayer is this week that these words have been really poignant for many of you. For, for all of us, I guess, if you're sitting here and we know Jesus, there's been those very special significant spiritual moments that have brought us incredibly close to God 
those moments that have been undeniably God. Those that are our, what we would call our testimony. That if the world was on fire, we could not deny that those were the engagements we had with God. Those were the moments of revelation. And maybe right now you're Brit Stale. Stir it up again. Go for another go. The, in these camp meetings, this is what the, we're all, all about. This is the summertime. This is a, a time when we've got a little bit of time on our hands. It's even still light at night for go for a walk and to search your heart. Maybe leave your room where you are now and get your coat on. Or if it's still, I don't know what the weather's outside. I'm recording this a little bit early. You go for a walk. Take the dog. Tell the people in your house, I'm just going to take some time out. And go and find God afresh. Go and seek him. Get on your knees in your bedroom. Shut the door. Ask God to come afresh into your life and to stir you and to bring you into a fresh place of being in love with him. That's what it's all about. Maybe you become tired in the work of God. Then let God begin to sharpen you. As iron sharpens iron, get with some people who are sharp in God and get some real encouragement. And maybe it's, you've been tripping over the call. Timothy knew what it was to be called. But from the moment that Paul laid hands on him, he suddenly didn't did become a super apostle and, and have this church of 20,000 people. Not by any means. And we read about missionary journeys that were difficult and circumstances that were hard. Working for Jesus is a hard gig. You know, it's not easy. He asks us to take up our cross and follow him. He does say his yoke is easy and his burden is light. But also there is a position where we have to put the cross on our shoulders, take our stand and begin to take our walk with him daily. And sometimes... In fact, a lot of the time, that hurts and it costs. And it, it costs us more than we want to pay. But you know what? We do it because we love Jesus and because he's asked us to. So there's a whole lot of things to think about from this message. And the one that's profound for me, just thinking back over what we've just said, is that the church in Ephesus is there no more. However big the church we, we are in, whether that's Sedgley or another church you're listening from, however clever we think we are, However brilliant we think our leaders are and uh, however big our bank balance has got absolutely nothing at all to do with what God will do. There is a lampstand in each church. There is an angel positioned at the door. And Jesus works for that church as long as their hearts are passionate towards him. But there are churches where God's just about to snuff that candle and remove his angel because he won't be messed about forever. He's looking for a passionate on fire bride. And there's been some great churches in our world that are there no longer. In fact, every one of the churches in the book of Revelation, their doors have closed for the last time at some point. God forbid that should be the same for us. And so that's why I'm imploring you as I preach to you tonight that you'd stir up the gift of love within you. You'd stir up that faith towards Jesus in a fresh way. That you won't just jog along as if everything's going to be okay. Look, years and months will pass by very quickly, but God wants us focused on him. I don't want to live my life to look backwards and say, I should have done more, I could have done more. I want to live wholeheartedly, 100% for the kingdom of God and for the plans and purposes to which Jesus has called me. And I'm sure that's your prayer as well tonight. So would you pray with me right now? Yeah, yeah. I see a couple, you're, you've been in several churches now and not found your position. Uh, you find it very difficult to settle down uh, because you have this vision of a ministry that God has given you. And the Lord would say he certainly has spoken those words to you. But what you fail to understand and appreciate is that there was a shaping time and a waiting time. So stop where you are, take a big deep breath and keep on serving the leaders that you're serving and God will bless you. Don't think about walking to another church or running away. It's got nothing to do with the church where you're at, but it's got everything to do with the attitude of your heart. I believe that with all of my heart, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah. 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 Now, there's somebody out there as well. You're a man. You've, um, you've had severe back pain uh, for several months now. And uh, you've, tr you've tried everything. You've been to an osteopath. Um, you've, you've tried uh, shrug painkillers and muscle relaxants uh, and it's still stiff it's, it's, it's more stiff on the left hand side than the right hand side uh, I believe as if you reach into the heart of God this evening he's going to 
heal you and touch you and bless you so that you let us know uh, that God would work in your heart and your life. Bless the Lord. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Even on these recordings speaking to us. He knows exactly who's listening to this right now and who's about to receive something from him. So bow your hearts before him. Father, I just want to thank you that this evening that we are part of the kingdom of God, uh, part of your church. Uh, and like Paul says to the young Timothy, don't mess about Timothy, just stir it up. Get on with it. Be in love with Jesus. Serve him wholeheartedly. And Lord, in that vein, that's what we want to say to you this evening. We want to love you more and we want to serve you better in Jesus' name. So thank you for being with us. We've really appreciated the time. All the preachers I know have done this because they've been passionate about stirring you up for more in God. So have a fantastic uh, evening. We'll see you again tomorrow as we unpack the Bible again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.